What's up everybody? Thomas Kennedy here from Dark Theory Tattoo, Thomas Kennedy Art, Tattoos by Thomas, all that good stuff. I have decided to put together some airbrush video courses for anyone starting out trying to learn how to airbrush. I've been airbrushing for 15 years now. So I thought it'd be cool to just share some of the stuff I've learned along the way and help any of you guys get started. It's an awesome hobby to have. It's a cool medium. Even if you're already an artist and you just want to pick up another medium, it's once you learn it, it's really good and easy to bust out some paintings and stuff really quick, especially if you just have an idea for something cool and you don't want to invest so many hours into it, just kind of testing your ideas before you do something in a final medium or whatever it might be. Um, I've airbrushed anything from t-shirts to motorcycles, cars, uh, helmets. Uh, I do body paint every summer and I still do t-shirts for people once in a while. Hats, pretty much anything paint will stick to. I've, I've painted some. Um, so first off, I'm gonna be going over different kinds of equipment, uh, a couple of different kinds of airbrushes you can pick from, what kind of compressor you'll need, and just a few techniques to get you started. They're really basic things that you have to practice over and over to learn the medium, to learn the airbrush. And once you do that, the rest of it really just depends on how much time and effort you put into your art where your art's at already before you start airbrushing. If your art's crap right now, then your art's gonna be crap even if you learn how to use the airbrush right. You have to study art, you have to practice art in order to do well with any medium. It's, it's the same with any medium. You, put, you, you only get out what you put into it and the better understanding you have with art in general, the better you'll be able to do with it. Um, I'll start off by flipping the camera around and just letting y'all see a few of the paintings I have here in my shop. And I might just do a quick little video tour of the shop. Uh, I'm, I'm a ta uh, full-time tattoo artist. I've been tattooing 10 years and I've been airbrushing for 15 years. And when I'm practicing or painting murals or canvases, airbrushing is my go-to. That's what I use mainly. And then I use paint brushes and other stuff, mix in different mediums and techniques with that. But that's my main go-to medium. So let me let y'all check out a few of my paintings around the shop. All right, here's one of my paintings I did last year. This is mostly done with airbrush. And then I went in there with a small paintbrush and did some fine little details and white highlights. That one turned out pretty cool. And that's just on a regular canvas. And let y'all see some of the details in there. Turned out pretty cool. And here's a mural that I actually did when I first opened up this shop. That is 100% airbrush and most of it's free-handed. I tried to use a stencil and it didn't work out so I just went ahead and free-handed most of it. All right, let y'all check out the lobby of the shop real quick. Dark Theory Tattoo, you can find that on Facebook, Tattoos by Thomas. Follow some of my tattoo work if you want. Here's a cool painting I did. That's all airbrush with a few little highlights done with a paintbrush. Same thing with this one. Mostly airbrush with a few fine details in paintbrush. Now I've got some work from some other artists in here too, but I've got pencil drawings. I do a lot of pencil drawings. This one here is mostly airbrush. 
And then some of the white highlights are paintbrush. Same thing with this one. And with this one, same thing. And this one is 100% freehand. And this one is all freehand, completely done with airbrush. This one's a few years old. All freehand airbrush. And this one is actually an oil painting from when I was in college. About 15 years ago. That's, that's when I first started airbrushing. And that was one of my last oil paintings. But And... This is my newest painting. I did go in there and do some of the background and and once again some more little highlights with paintbrush, but most of that is airbrush. All right, so that's some of my some samples of my work. All right, so let's get started with types of airbrushes now there there's two basic different kinds really single action and double action and what all that means is how many actions or moves the trigger on the airbrush can make I never use a single action airbrush those are more for airbrushing model cars or something like that simple crafts or something maybe where you're painting everything one solid color um they're not really handy for anything like what i do or so when you're looking for an airbrush to purchase make sure you go for a double action now here's a sample of a double action and this one is actually what you call a siphon feed now how this one works is the paint goes in this bottle below the airbrush and as the air flows it actually siphons the paint out and that's how that works. Now the trigger I was talking about when you push the trigger down it allows the air to flow and then as you pull the trigger back it allows the paint to flow. So that's the dual action. A single action would be just pushing the trigger down and that would make the airflow and the paint spray out. And you have no control over the amount of paint it sprays. You can't make thicker lines and thinner lines as you can with these. So make sure you get a dual or double action airbrush. Now this was a siphon feed. This is what I started out with and they work really well i mean it's really just preference between siphon or gravity feed i just so happened to a couple years in airbrushing i started using some gravity feed guns and that's what i stuck with ever since um the only times i really use any of these anymore is if i have uh, a big solid area i'm doing because i can fit more paint into a, a bottle like this and I won't have to refill as often but that's really the only time I would ever use that now this is my go-to these are Iwata Eclipse HPCS that's the model um, you don't have to start out with Iwata that's my favorite brand but it's definitely not what you have to start out with because these are about 200 bucks just for the airbrush itself um, you can get a dual action. Actually, Iwata makes a Neo. I think it's called a Neo, and it's really affordable. It's probably, you can get the whole kit for probably less than 100 bucks, and that would be fine starting out. Um, and then if you stick with it, I would recommend getting one of these because these are really good for fine detail and just all around whatever you want to use it for. Um, and this is, like I said, a gravity feed. The paint goes up here. And then the gravity just pulls the paint down in there. Um, these tend to be better for if you're having to paint uh, like a ceiling or kind of hold the airbrush more up where 
siphon feed. Uh, it may not be able to spray upside down as much. I mean, each one has its benefits, but this is my go-to. This is my favorite. Um, they're easy to clean. They work really well. They're just solid guns. That's my go-to. All right, that's the two main kinds of airbrushes. And now we'll let you check out my air compressor, my air compressor and hose and all that good stuff. All right, now the kind of hose you will purchase will really depend on what kind of airbrush you pick. Um, some kits might come with the hose and some might not. And each brand requires its own kind of hose as far as the threading to, for it to fit on the gun and all that stuff. Um, this is the Iwata hose. And if you go with an Iwata, they make these quick connects. It makes it really easy for this to just snap onto the bottom of the airbrush and, un and just easy, easily disconnect it so you don't have to screw it on and off every time. And when you get into using multiple colors, you can have a quick connect on every airbrush and just disconnect and go to another one, different color, easy. I have several different airbrushes, so I bounce, if I'm doing a, if I'm painting t-shirts or something that requires a lot of different colors, I can just disconnect, connect another one and go back and forth from color to color and it makes it really easy. Now, as far as an air compressor, they make tankless air compressors just for airbrushing but most of them are junk and some of them don't put out enough pressure not even 35 or 40 psi and that's usually what you'll run your airbrush at depending on what kind of paint you use um and as far as the kind of air compressor i use i have a 16 gallon i believe it is and it's two or three horsepower engine rating and that's plenty that's that's more than enough you can use one of the pancake style tanks or whatever or the small compressors with two hot dog cylinder shaped or whatever tanks those are good as long as it has at least a three or five gallon tank and one or two horsepower engine that should be plenty um you can get one for less than a hundred bucks and then you can use it for other air tools too. So it comes in really handy. This is the one I use. Mine is covered in paint from a few years of use. But like I said, you can spend a hundred bucks, get a compressor like this and it will do you good for at least four or five years. All right, now time to get started spraying some paint. With the gravity feed, the top of the paint bottle just comes off just like that, just kind of snaps on. And as you're spraying, paint does build up on the tip of the needle. So you have to keep that clean while you're spraying and the tip of the airbrush actually unscrews to where you can access the needle easier. And once you get the hang of things and get comfortable holding the airbrush, you can just take this off and leave it off while you're working. You just have to be careful because anything that hits this needle can bend it. And if that needle has this, any tiny little burr or bend to it, you won't get a good spray. So make sure you don't bend the tip of that needle. Um, depending on the airbrush you use, those needles can be anywhere from five to twenty dollars a piece. So you really don't want to mess them up. So just be really, really careful. And like I was talking about, the quick connects, they snap on that easy. I really recommend getting those. Otherwise, you have to screw the hose on and off every time. Now, once your tank is filled up, 
you'll see that just pushing the trigger down brings the airflow, and then as you pull it back, it sprays the paint. Now, this just takes a lot of time playing around with it, getting the feel for it, getting the feel of this trigger. Just starting out, it's going to be really tricky. So I really recommend getting some poster board or a sheet of this foam board from Walmart. It's really cheap. Get several sheets of these and just practice. What we're going to start out with, we're just going to make a lot of dots and lines just to learn the trigger. So like I said, when you push down on the trigger, it makes the air flow. As you pull the trigger back, it makes the paint flow. The more you pull the trigger back, the more paint you're releasing. So if you're wanting to make a thin line or a thin dot, you want to get really close to the, the poster board or canvas. If you're wanting to make a, a wider line or a wider dot, you want to back up from the canvas. All right, so I will demonstrate some dots. Put your finger on the trigger. Just get maybe a couple inches away from the poster board and just start barely pulling the trigger back. Now the longer you pull the trigger back and hold it, the more paint will come out and the darker the dot will get. And if you want to make a small dot, you get a little bit closer and you just be really careful pulling the trigger back to release the paint. The closer you are, the less you pull the trigger back. The farther away you are, the more you pull the trigger back and it releases more paint to make a bigger dot. Now you can pull the trigger back less, farther away from the canvas, and it will make a lighter dot. Now the longer you hold it, the darker it gets. And you can make gradients, fade it in and out. And then you can get closer you can make some fine lines. And notice that I'm holding my left hand up under here to hold myself steady. Makes it a lot easier starting out. Closer, finer lines. Make sure you clean that tip if it gets built up on it. Farther away thicker lines and then work on different size dots then just work on doing some shading filling in some spots just play around with it until you get comfortable with the trigger. And then, when you get really comfortable, just making lines and dots. Then start kind of mixing it up a little bit. Just make some curved lines, give it some shadow. Make a dot. Give it some shadows. And then just start whatever you like to draw. Just start freehanding a little bit. Just really get the hang of that trigger. Maybe work on some lettering. But in 
until you have the hang of that trigger, work on different size dots. Lots of lines. And then maybe work on filling in some spots solid black. And I really recommend just starting out with black paint only. Just because you can work on gradients. And that's really all you need starting out. Now as far as paint, Createx Opaque Black, that's really all you need starting out. You can do really light shading with it, all the way to the blackest black. That's all you need starting out. Now this is a, I think a four ounce bottle, maybe eight ounce, but either way, it's a pretty good eight ounce bottle. You can pick this up at Hobby Lobby for $13, or a lot of times you can use a 40% off coupon, and so I mean, there's always good deals there. You can buy your airbrushes there, and use coupons on that to get discounts, or you can hop online, just do a Google search for dual action airbrush, Createx paint. This is the kind of paint you'll want to use on t-shirts and I'll do more videos walking through that whole process. Um, but starting out, just get some poster board, black Createx paint, a dual action airbrush with a hose and an air compressor and you're ready to go. And all you need to do is practice lines and dots and shading until you have the hang of that trigger then you'll be able to draw whatever you want paint whatever you want freehand and in the next video i might do how to airbrush a t-shirt like a little beach scene or something like that um, or if you have any requests feel free to comment um, with your ideas I'm, i'll do an instructional on anything i know how to paint uh, we can do different kinds of flames, um, how to make t-shirt stencils. I'll probably do a video for all that stuff. It's just going to take time. But make sure to leave in the comments what you would like to see most, and I'll definitely do a, a walkthrough of it. Um, subscribe to the channel. Look me up on Instagram at Thomas Kennedy Art. Uh, Facebook, Tattoos by Thomas, Dark Theory Tattoo. And until next time, get the supplies I told you to get and get to work practicing. And that way you'll be ready for the next video and take it to the next level. Start doing some color stuff and maybe learn how to paint t-shirts. Uh, there's a lot of money to be made with airbrushing if you want to actually make it into a business. Or if you want to just do it for a hobby, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a good hobby to have. Um, but... There's always a demand for airbrush t-shirts, airbrush baseball helmets, motorcycle helmets, um, painting murals on walls or exterior walls. The possibilities are limitless. Um, so just get creative with it. Practice the basics. You have to learn the basics. You have to get the trigger control down or else you won't be any good. And always practice drawing on paper. If you can't draw it on paper with a pencil, you're not going to be able to freehand it with an airbrush. So definitely work on your art and practice these basics over and over. Till next time, take it easy.